Hello, Monsters are Bound here. Welcome back to Total War Warhammer 2 Mortal Empires and part 41 of my Kalida campaign. Some people might say that I wasn't prepared for the Chaos Invasion. Those people are very perceptive, down on the nose. I was just hoping it wouldn't happen. Kind of like global warming, really. Uh, so, okay, so we've got five, seven Chaos Army. I mean, hopefully Teclis will have to deal with these guys so that's probably going to be okay maybe um, and then of course we've got uh, the Norsicans who apparently have buggered off so at least that's working in my favor so King Wakaf is currently by him is by his lonesome he's all by himself and he is facing five stacks of chaos warriors which is it's not the best, I'll, I'll be honest. So Khalid is going to have to quickly march south. It's going to take a bloody ages to get down here. And we're probably going to lose a lot of this territory over here. But that's not the end of the world. It's fine. It's probably fine. What I might do... King Wakaf. Wakafthin. You don't really have anything, do you? You are, yeah, no, okay, so what I might do in that case is maybe give you, let's give you some Armour of Eternity, because you're going to bloody need it. Forged from bronze, cooled in the blood of the giant Librazian scorpion and gilded in red and Lamian gold, this ancient breastplate will turn aside all but the strongest of blows. This gives him more save, more defense, armor, and regeneration, which is very nice. He's going to bloody, he's going to need it, isn't he? All by himself over there. Uh, you can have that. You can have a sword of might. Yep, good luck with that. Uh, have have an opal amulet as well. Why not? And a terrifying mask of E. And sure, have have the herald of Zandrai, which is for chariots. You don't have any chariots, but I guess that doesn't really matter because I don't know why you'd want to vanguard deploy chariots to be honest. Uh, King Peter, Andre and Fluffy do have a skill point. They've managed to, to rank up once more. What do I think? What do I think? You've got, you got gold you got gold chevron chariots. Does a dune rider does affect legendary legions doesn't it? So maybe I want to do this. Physical resistance, melee attack and armour. I mean, it's all good. On the other hand, do I want to make him a bit more tanky or maybe more replenishment? It's a lot of good options. I don't think Dune Rider is... Ah, screw it. We'll get Dune Rider. It's done. So, so quick silver and fickle am I. Uh, Ramnerif, you have a skill point as well. What do I want there? Kind of like the incantation of protection. Um, I mean, the, yeah, the skull storm is yeah, it's all right. Maybe I just want replenished troops. You know what? We're just gonna get. We're just gonna replenish his troops. I think probably, probably gonna be the best option there. Doc Karaz really does need walls. We do have walls coming up. Uh, let's get rid of the f uh, funerary di district and get more walls. And we need to repair that. And I... What do I... Right, Martak... Okay, so... Kofa and Lashik do not have walls. Sorcerer Islands does. And the Wizard Caliph Palace does as well. But it doesn't have a... It doesn't have a proper garrison. And most of these Chaos stacks have Hell Cannon. So they do not... They do not give a shit about walls. They just... You, they, they've stolen my tactic of just kicking the gate in and killing everyone inside the city which is unfair that's my tactic it took minutes to think that up and they've just stolen it away I command. prince araru you can have immortality i mean you're a creepy skellington so i don't know why you haven't got immortality already can we assault a rat i think you did that i think you did that last episode so probably not Gordon Ramsay's back up and ready to go. Uh, he, he got shanked pretty quickly last time. So fingers crossed that uh, he doesn't get shanked again. I, I guess maybe just get... 
boosting? Oh, you don't really. I mean, it doesn't really matter, does it? Uh, 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 indomitable will. I mean, you are Gordon Ramsay after all. If Gordon Ramsay doesn't have indomitable will, then I don't know who does. Okay, let's get you back over here. Hopefully, these guys will leave you alone. Prince Deskhead is. We were chasing Rodiger around, but I don't know where Rodiger's disappeared off to. This as holy crap has Hags pulled out the chariots. Okay. Maybe this is Snorko's latest devious plan. Can we you know what? Just just assault Isabella again. And once again, he's basically murdered half the army. Okay, do we have one more turn for the siege? Uh, taking Karakate Peaks is gonna be it's gonna be pretty tough. But it should be fine. We've got two armies there now, so I might have to send one. Maybe I need to send Ibnus and Mittens over to deal with Chaos. I don't think Wakaf's going to do very well by himself. I'm sure it'll be fine. Uh, right, Thutep. You were... Yeah, you're going to... Yes, I was, I was bringing... Satep was going to head, head down to help out Wakaf and Kalida, wasn't he? Yes, he was. I remember. I remember now. If that's the case... Okay, public order here is okay, actually. That's nice. I was, oh, shoot. I was going to save up Canopic Jars for a sodding army, wasn't I? Damn it. Okay, fine. Let's just entomb because we need another turn. We've got some research to go as well. I should really have post-it notes here so I can write down what my plan is for when I inevitably forget what my plan is. Uh, carrying units are pretty garbage anyway, so who cares? Necro Sphinx? I quite like Necro Sphinx. Forbidden scrolls found in the deep desert reveal portals to Usirian's realm. This is where the Necro, Necro Sphinx lurk, awaiting to be tethered to a dread statue. Sounds fun. I'm still rated unreliable. I'm not sure whether that's a bug. Or whether, because normally, un, I, I find unreliable phase, but maybe breaking a military alliance is seen a bit more badder than just breaking a non-aggression pact. Because it's been quite a few turns since I last betrayed someone. I think people should be getting over that by now, but they're not. Oh, and I remember Sigvald's name. It is Sigvald. So Kolek and Sigvald, I believe, spawn separately from Archaeon and Sartorial now. Because I do see Kolek, but he usually appears uh, somewhere in Norsica. And he doesn't seem to spawn with the main group. And Sigvald is, is usually wandering around Bretonia, I, I find, for some reason. Maybe they have better access to nipple clamps or something, I don't know. Right, what are you going to do? You are going to attack me. That is... Fine, okay. Sure. Bloody Skaven and their bloody ambushes. It's fine, we got this. Because, as per usual, the Skaven have lined up slightly far away from... I don't... It's not really an ambush, is it? So, I'm going to pull my army into a hasty battle line. We don't really have much infantry in this army. For the Mizash. That does... In, in one way, it does mean that at least the Death Globe Bombardiers only have a limited amount of damage they can do. On the other hand, they do kind of focus on the infantry. So, our infantry is pretty much... It's a dead cert to get pretty, pretty messed up. The Casket of Souls can't quite move fast enough, so we're leaving the most wounded unit of Ushabti to make sure that no clan rats get spawned on its face. And over here, of course, clan rats being spawned on their face, along with the Pestilence Clan Stone, which is going to do uh, give us a debuff and makes the enemy have poison attacks. So that's fun. We've got two Doom Wheels moving in. The Stalkers have intercepted it. And in come two help his abominations as well. 
And in come the Death Globes. Oh my god, that stunk. Over on our right flank, the Ushabti have got stuck right in. We really need them to break through this unit of... Is this Storm Vermin? Storm Vermin. So we can deal with the Death Globes. Because at this point, Death Globes are just... They've just got free reign. The centre's holding up as some Nehekaran warriors fight some storm vermin with halberds. And on the left flank, it's a mess as Hellpit Abominations, Doom Wheels, Lemizash, Stalkers, and a whole bunch of other crap get stuck in and start just wailing away on each other. It's some Tomb Scorpions there. The Shabti with Great Bows be opening fire on the Abominations, trying to whittle down their health, because currently they're fighting some Tomb Guard. In comes a nice purple sun that's going to do some lovely damage to that Storm Vermin unit. On the far left, our unit of Ushabti are stuck in against a unit of Clan Rats and Storm Vermin and doing pretty well holding their own against both units. Unfortunately, then they spawn some like Clan Rats right on top of the Casket of Souls. Less than good. I think the Casket of Souls should be okay, but it does mean he can't fire. In comes a Tomb Scorpion to lend some assistance to our poor beleaguered Ushabti. The Mizash is making sure that this, this Doom Wheel doesn't get away. Good stuff there. And finally, we have broken through on the right flank. We're chasing down the Death Globes, so they can't do any more damage. 37 kills. Ugh. They're getting chopped to pieces. Good. That's how I like my Death Globes. Dead. There are some more Death Globes here being chased down by Hecat Hetacor. Unfortunately, Hetacor decides to uh, to run back, and that, that does mean this unit is now free to do stuff. There's also another... They had so many... I think they had like four or five units of Death Globes. Okay, they're throwing at the uh, Stalkers. It's not doing an awful lot of damage. It does more damage against infantry, but it still does enough damage to be, you know, to warrant wiping them out. The casket has been freed up thanks to the help from the, the Tomb Scorpion. We've managed to put down one Hell Pit Abomination, but one more is coming back to fight. It's chasing down this unit of Skeleton Archers. Not much we can do to stop it. We've focused on with the uh, Great Bows. We're going to cast a Spirit Leech on it, and then cast a Scroll of Shielding on the Archers to try and protect them as much as possible. However, now, now stationary, it does mean that Ushabti with Great Bows can easily target it and pick it off. Down it goes, and it spawned the unit of Skaven Slaves with Spears. As you can see, they it says they're shattered. But if you look down in the unit info, you can see their leadership is currently 35. Uh, so for some, because the army has shattered, it's showing up as shattered. But I think because it's spawned after, or maybe as the army shattered, they're, they're currently just fighting on as normal. So at first I think, well, maybe they're just running in this direction, but then they start fighting the, the skeleton archers, so I throw the rest of my infantry at them. I mean, they're only Skaven Slaves, so it's it's not really it's not really much of a problem. Still, it's a bit weird. Well, at least my territory is safe, which is more than can be said for my infantry. Uh, and with that in mind, I think I'm probably going to take the replenishment, because uh, those poor skelly boys look a little bit uh, worse for wear. I'm also going to have to deal with with that. That could be. Oh no, King Lemizash is unlucky. Oh dear. Oh dear, indeed. My goodness. And we've got yet another Skaven force approaching from the south, which is fun. Uh. Well, oh, great, there's more. I was going to say, at least one was heading south, but... And at least the Norse are going to beat up Vlad for me. I mean, that's... So it's not all bad. Okay, uh, Gordon Ramsay was almost shivved by Sly once more, but managed to, to dodge him. 
Lord Masters and Avalon have confederated. Yes, Ekic managed to assault King Lemizash. I thought his units were looking a little bit on the uh, the weak on the damage side. I hadn't. I, I thought maybe they just hadn't had time to replenish, but no, he was assaulted. What a dick! Oh my god. Okay, well, King Lemizash is the exterminator. There we go. Can we, Gordon? Can you maybe assault Sly back? Boom! You failed, but still, you know, good, good attempt. Good attempt. Right, Khalid, you're marching south with all haste. And I think King Satep is going to join you. Uh, it's like, oh, it's Grimgore. Bloody Grimgore. Oh, shut up, Grimgore. Shut up. Right. Isabella's buggered off now. Uh, let's come down. I mean, we can see Castle, Dr there's Castle Drakenhof. So, one of our books is there. So we do want that. But we just need to get there. To be honest, we, we need to wipe out Vlad, and Vlad has uh, has has quite quite a lot of territory, and he's also friends with. Where's have I? Yep, there, no, there they are. Darkness comes. Oh, they're not military. They are at war with the warriors of. Was it Manfred? Maybe it resets. I'm fair. I'm, I might be going mad, but I'm fairly sure Vlad was at one point ally with the Warriors of Chaos. As you can see, Vlad has extensive territories. Manfred is sort of. Wait, no. Where is Manfred? Oh, there's Manfred. Manfred's hiding in the mountains there. So the Greenskins have the South Mountains, and Vlad controls most of. It looks like the eastern portion of the empire, the south and eastern portion of the empire, with only the Wood Elves holding a few territories over to the west, and uh, I believe that poor old the poor old empire, poor old Karl has been destroyed. So that's a shame. Uh, Brit I kind of want to help Britonia though. Where's Britonia? Weird that the, uh, the Beastmen are at war with the Warriors of Chaos, but that's, I'm okay with that. Champion of the Lady. You ask for a boon. Speak How about some money? My power to give. Clever. Thank you. That's uh, that's nice of you to say. So we are. I'm I'm trying to help Bretonia a bit because I'm hoping they can maybe wipe out Musulon for me, and then I can get a military alliance with them. But at this point, with an unreliable unreliable rating, that's probably not going to happen. So maybe I just need to. Well, it's nice to have someone that isn't going to try and kill me. Talking of people trying to kill me. Moxia and Hivald. Uh, okay, so the Mizash. Oh, we can count for Kemri and War Sphinx. Excellent. That's going to come in useful. And then we can just pop over here and murder the last few remaining Skaven. And I think we'll take the Canopic Jars. And that means Pox Marsh is safe for the moment. Can we? We can catch this army, but is there anything? Uh, I don't. There might be more armies down. I mean, mm. ah, screw it. Death or glory. Uh, fine. I mean, there's, there doesn't seem to be any army that I could see, and we should be able to crush this fort. It's mostly Skaven slaves. They do have some death globes and a hell pit abomination, but uh, we should be able to just uh, if I can flank them, maybe just wipe those guys. I've got. I've got the Kemri and War Sphinx. I think that might be his job. This army should be a much easier one to deal with than the previous battle because it's got a lot of Skaven slaves in it. And of course Skaven slaves, not, not the best. Do tend to run away at the drop of a hat. Only, uh, I mean, are they are they better than Skellingtons? I'm not entirely sure. Difficult to tell. I, I don't think they are. So most of our army is set up over this on this hill over here. So we can get good shots off on the enemy army's approaches. Uh, oh yeah, of course, clan rats being spawned. They they end up in fighting our tomb guard, 
which doesn't end up going very well for them. So, yeah, they, they pretty much immediately break, which is fine. Our stalkers are hiding over in the forest over here. Uh, where are they? There, there they are. They're currently hiding in the forest. We're going to see if we can sneak up on the Skaven and deal with their death globes. We've also got a unit of carry in the back. I'm going to try picking off the death globes with those guys. So the clan rats who got spawned in the midst of my army are now getting shot to pieces. Off they go. And uh, they won't be coming back anytime soon. And we also have a unit of rat ogres fast approaching. We're going to focus fire with our archers. As you can see, we're doing a lot of damage to them as they as they come towards the, the army. Getting extensive acupuncture, which they do not like as they are... There they go, they've broken. They didn't even reach the, the, the front line. They immediately broke. Perfect. Death Globes opening fire. We're going to hit... We're going to try and get one with the... Carrion, but the Wall Sphinx is going to deal with the other one by just trashing, smashing through the Skaven line and then just barreling. He went a bit far, but that's okay. There we go. So he's going to start crushing these Death Globe Bombardiers. That's why I need War Sphinxes. War Sphinxes are a hard counter to Death Globes. Karen's going to deal with the other one that's locked down those guys. Perfect. Don't need to worry about them anymore. On the right flank, poor old Rakash has got surrounded by Storm Vermin and all right, Plague Monks and Skaven Slave Spears. Shouldn't be a problem, he's fine. It just means there's a target-rich environment for him. I mean, he doesn't even need to tell the, the Chariot Man to drive any closer. He can all, he's can he got lots of Skaven that he can hit with his with his sword from the back of his chariot. Some of his Tomb Guard moving in to assist. Tomb Scorpion chasing off some... Uh, Skaven slaves over there. The stalkers are out in the forest. A bit late, but you know, they're just in time to join in with the, the general slaughter. The War Sphinx having a lovely old time down there. The right flank is doing quite well. We've got the Helpit Abomination locked in combat with some Halberds. They're going to do quite well against that. And the Ushabti have quickly dealt with the Skaven slaves. That, of course, means they can now assist with uh, some of the slaves did, did retreat they, they don't have a lot of leadership so they do break quite quickly but Skaven do come back obviously so you end up with sort of this wave mechanic as they just throw wave upon wave of rallying units at you the war sphinx is carving its way through some plague monk sensor bearers looks like they've broken they're terrified yep and the stalkers move in to assist archers picking off some of the slaves that have come back into battle and the ones that do are now getting yep there come the ushabti I would if I were you. And over on the right flank, Rakash is free of his slaughter. He racked up 80 kills just, just in that melee, so not too bad. Good job. And the rest of the army is disappearing off into the distance. Another a rat dead. I'm fairly sure it's not the same one. And I think we're going to take the Canopic Jars. Good, that's another load of Skaven dead. I mean, God knows how many army they've got there. They've probably got endless, endless waves. Never mind. Kowataman, you do have a skill point. Replenish troops. We, with only two armies here, I think the ability to replenish our troops almost instantaneously is going to be incredibly important. So let's get that. King Lemizash, you're pretty much ready to go again. And we've got Chaos encroaching to the south, so we need to go down and deal with that. I'm not too worried about the Fuming Serpent. I can lose that and, and really not, not bothered. I do want to keep the Vampire Coast, though. I want to probably get some sort of some sort of recruitment buildings here. Um, yes. Okay, so we've got, we've got open graves there. Let's get Bone Shaper. Maybe you're a, actually. Do we maybe want to get a mortuary house for the replenishment? It's only five percent. Let's do it. I think being uh, ready to to fight at a moment's notice is going to be, as I say, incredibly important. Uh, let's see if we can assassinate this guy. No, we 
failed. Araru, you have let me down. But you have indomitable will. So, good stuff. And Lemizash has a skill point as well. Uh, he's got a Kemri and War Sphinx, so I think we're going to want to go for Indomitable Will, because then we can go for Conqueror. Fox Tem. He is indeed. Uh, power Drain, I think. More Winds of Magic. I mean, we should have crap loads of Winds of Magic at the moment, because obviously we've got the Pyramid of Nagash here, which gives us another 30 on top of all of our other bonuses. So the amount of Winds of Magic we should have available is uh, ridiculous. What do I want to do with King Wakaf? Do I maybe want to send... I mean, maybe I just want to defend. I mean, these, these don't have any walls, but maybe if I can, like, hold... I think my best chance is... Defeat... I mean, or at least try doing as much damage to them as possible in a siege battle. So with that in mind, do I maybe take position at Ma Martek here and just just wait for reinforcements? You know, batten down the hatches and hope for the best. It's gonna be fine. Maybe? Mm, don't know. It's, uh, it's a lot of okay. So we've got five five chaos hordes heading towards our homeland. We've got two heading. I mean, they, they, I think they're going for the star tower. Say, I, I just want to defend the Vampire Coast. We've only got two armies there. This one looks like it's heading after Clan Pestilence. Is it a war with Clan Pestilence? Where's Clan Pestilence? Uh, blah, 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 blah. Clan Pestilence. Yes. Yes, okay. So that, that could work in our favour. Which is good. But that's a bit of a concern. That's more of a concern. That's highly entertaining though. Watching Watching a whole bunch of Norskans beat up Vlad is uh, is making my day. It's making it's making up for the numerous chaos hordes. Anyway, um, unfortunately we are running out of time, so I'm going to have to leave it there. So thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.